<clears throat> All right, so we're here with the sequel of Night, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. This one is part two, Freddy's Revenge. When it first came out, of course, people did not like this one at all, really. Mainly because of the chances it took, which I think, you know, it's a sequel to a movie that wasn't really even a franchise yet. They tried something different. I think they succeeded in spots. But, you know, it's, the acting's not bad. It's actually good. Mark, uh, Mark Patton as Jesse Walsh. I thought he did good, uh, great, really, but... I mean, yeah, people make fun of his screaming. I mean, but to me, that's more realistic reaction of what's going, what happens with him. <laughs> like, that... If people made fun of his screaming at, like a girl. Um, I mean, if you had like knives coming out of your fingernails and your body's transforming into something, I think, yeah, I think you're going to scream a certain way. Um, but maybe that's just me, you, you know. Um, but the movie, I guess, it, I want to say it takes place, I guess, five years after the first one. That's when... Um, because they mentioned something about five years, so I'm guessing that this is five years. So pretty much the movie, it takes place, uh, a teenage boy is haunted in his dreams by a deceased child murderer, Ray Krueger, who is out to possess him in order to continue his reign of terror in the real world. Now, the, um, now, I grew up watching this one a lot, too, as well as, like, all of them, really, but, I never hated this one, let alone disliked it. I thought it was good. I, I liked watching it, so I kept watching it. Um, the effects in this are amazing. Um, especially the transformation, you know, scene. The look of Freddy is cool to make up that they did. I, I believe I was watching the Never Sleep Again. I think they said they, the guy that did the first makeup for the first movie, I guess he wanted to step away from something. He either wanted to step away from this one, or he just had stuff he was doing at the time, so he couldn't really, uh, fully, you know, give it his attention. Uh, this one's directed by Jack Shoulder, who I guess did The Hidden. Uh, Robert Rustler as Ron Grady. Now, the friendship between these two, I, I mean, now looking at it, you know, they're just two buddies. They make fun of each other, but they're still friends. I always thought they were just okay with each other. I never really bought, like, the friendship when I was younger, but I guess... I mean, now I do, because he does try to help Jesse when stuff's going bad for him, when he... <laughs> that one line where, something is trying to get inside my body. And then Brady's like, yeah, she's female, and you want to sleep... And she's waiting for you in the cabana, and you want to sleep with me. <laughs> And there's cool lines from Freddy as well, like when you first see him, he, or not when you first see him, but when you fully see him, um, that one cool scene where he grabs Jesse, and he's like, you got, we got special work to do here, you and me, and you've got the body, I've got the brain. Like, the makeup effect in that was cool, even the lighting in that scene was awesome. Like Robert England owns, he owned Freddy at that time, which, and the studio, the new line, Bob Shea, whatever, he, apparently they didn't really think so, so they replaced him at first, and then they brought him back, because the guy that they got him, they got to replace him was atrocious, <laughs> which is said in their words, um, but yeah, I, I really, I did like this one, uh, it's, it's really, but it sucks, because the way this one ends, were Lisa saves Jesse at the same time, but then at the very end, uh, Freddy's glove comes out of the one girl's stomach and then drives off into the desert, and we're to presume that they all die. <laughs> but I'm not gonna think that. I'm gonna I'm gonna think they woke up and they're fine. But um, I would say this one's a bit underrated. Like, I mean, even when it like came out, like it was. I guess, liked them, really, in Europe. 
um, well loved in Europe, at least. But I mean, this one made a lot of money. So that's what made them want to do a third one. Um, but yeah, oh, there's a scene in this I thought was just amazing. The, I know the party scene. I know like people are like, oh, they're breaking the rules. You don't do that. Uh, he's not supposed to be in the real world. Now the rules of the see. I was confused watching it this time around because I was trying to pay attention to stuff. So, if he's trying to possess Jesse, so, I guess, while he, I guess while Jesse's awake as well, because then he's able to, uh, blow up stuff, close doors at Lisa's house, when she's trying to talk to Jesse, um, and then he morphs into Freddy. And then chases her. And then he bursts through the glass doors, which I, I like. But I'm like, okay, so, but see, that's where I have a problem with, because in the first one, he didn't really have, he didn't really have power. He was really real. But then, I didn't understand in the first one, also at the ending with the mom, where she gets sank into the bed. I didn't understand that. She's like a skeleton, and then she just sinks into the bed. And then he, even at the end when he uh, rises from the bed, it's a cool scene, but <laughs> I'm like, he's supposed to be in the real world, but then, you know. So they sort of broke the rules in the first one, but I guess nobody's going to mention stuff for, like that. Um, I don't know, like, Hero is cool because he's, people are afraid of him, I guess. It, really, he's trying to, re he's trying to expose himself to people. <laughs> So, like, to get him to know who he is, because that's why he gets that line, you are all my children now. So, pretty much, he's marking them, so they have his image in their heads. That's what I bought it as, anyway. Um, I, I love the scene with the dad, where he comes out with a shotgun. This is, like, the, like the most gangster uh, Freddy has ever been in the entire series. To me, like that walk that he does, the G walk, he's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> he like literally, he st he stares down to dad shooting at him, and then he turns, staring at him, and then he turns and swag, and he walks away, bursts into flames, walking into the gate or whatever that is, or fence, and it's just amazing. I love that scene. That's like the, I would say that's one of the best scenes in the entire franchise, for me. I would say that's my number one. Number two would be the Alice getting ready scene in part four. Um, but yeah, that's my number one, I gotta say, because, again, uh, I wish they would stay. I wish they would gave. I mean, the writer also said in the, that he, um, he wanted to give Freddy more dialogue or menacing qualities or whatever. So... I mean, I'm fine with that, but I wish they would kept him like this from part two, one and two into three. I mean, he's still creepy in three, but he's starting to get more humorous. I don't know, like, but yeah, I overall like this one. I wouldn't. It's not really. It's not even a bad movie. It's not like, I, yeah, there's overtones, but you know, I didn't uh, even catch them really, even when I was watching it when I was younger. Even growing up, I didn't catch really that. I mean, I would make fun of Martin Patton for his screaming, but scream like a girl. But then, you know, I mean, retrospect now when I'm older, it's like, I would probably be screaming the same way. Like, let something like that happen to me while I sleep <laughs> or while I'm awake or whatever. So, 